Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 32 of the course on statistics and probability. Students, you will recall that in the last lecture, I started the third and last segment of this course, that of statistical inference. And in this regard, the very first concept that I dealt with in some detail was the concept of the sampling distribution of X bar. We discussed that the mean of the sampling distribution is equal to the population mean. The standard error of this sampling distribution is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size in that situation where the finite population correction is not required. And towards the end of the lecture, I discussed with you an extremely important theorem known as the central limit theorem. You will recall that according to this theorem, the sampling distribution of X bar approaches normality as the sample size small n tends to infinity. Students, let us begin today's lecture by discussing a real life example and a real life application of this particular concept. As you now see on the screen, suppose that a construction company has 310 employees who have an average annual salary of rupees 24,000 and the standard deviation of the annual salaries is rupees 5,000. Suppose that the employees of this company launch a demand that the government should institute a law by which their average salary should be at least rupees 24,500 and suppose that the government decides to check the validity of this demand by drawing a random sample of 100 employees of this company and acquiring information regarding their present salaries. What is the probability that in a random sample of 100 employees, the average salary will exceed rupees 24,500 so that the government decides that the demand of the employees of this company is unjustified and hence does not pay attention to the demand, although in reality it was justified. Students, you have seen how this is an interesting problem. We assume that the actual figures are the actual figures which are the ones that employees are saying. But when the government has drawn size 100 ka sample, then if in that sample, the average salary is more than 24,500, so, the government says that the demand is unfounded. Let us see how we are going to solve this problem. As you now see on the screen, the sample size 100 is large enough to assume that the sampling distribution of X bar is approximately normally distributed with mean and standard deviation given as follows. Mu x bar is equal to mu and that we already know is rupees 24,000 and sigma x bar is equal to sigma over square root of n multiplied by the square root of capital N minus small n over capital N minus 1. And Putting the values of the population standard deviation, capital N and small n, sigma x bar comes out to be rupees 412.20. Students, you have seen that in this example, we have the standard deviation of x bar ke liye wo formula apply kiya hai, which is valid in the case of sampling without replacement from a finite population. Aapne dekha ke population size is only 310. 
or jo sample size hai that is 100. So, it is obvious that the sample size is approximately one third of the population size and therefore, it is much bigger than 5 percent of the population size. Or, pichle lecture me, maine aap se yehi kaha tha na, ke agar sample size um, less than 5 percent of the population size ho, then we say that this um, FPC is not required because it is approximately equal to 1. Yaha pe to definitely not because 310 minus 100 over 310 minus 1 is not going to be equal to 1. Now, we have found the standard deviation and the mean of the sampling distribution of x bar. Question kya hai? What is the probability that my x bar will be greater than rupees 24,500? And students, I will remind you uh, of the lecture on the normal distribution. Chunke hum keh rahe hain ke according to the central limit theorem, our distribution here is approximately normal. Therefore, we are going to find this probability by computing the area under the normal distribution. As you will recall, in the lecture on the normal distribution, that is lecture number 30, I discussed with you the process of standardization. And as you will remember, the formula was z is equal to x minus mu over sigma. Is formula ko yaad rakhne ka asaan tarin tariqa kya hai? Ye hai ki aap kahein ki z is equal to the variable minus its mean divided by the standard deviation. Jo bhi variable hai, uska mean subtract kar dijay aur is quantity ko divide kar dijay by the standard deviation. So, Students, how are we going to apply this concept in this particular situation? As you know, in this situation, our variable is not x but x bar. So, our formula becomes z is equal to x bar minus mu x bar over sigma x bar. Aapne dekha ke bunyadi concept bilkul wohi hai the variable minus its mean divided by its standard deviation. And as you now see on the screen, when we substitute the values of mu x bar and sigma x bar in this formula, we obtain z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over square root of n in that particular situation where we do not require the FPC and in the situation where we do require this quantity, z is equal to x bar minus mu over sigma over square root of n multiplied by the square root of capital N minus small n over capital N minus 1. All right, normal distribution hai humare paas the distribution of x bar aur wo point bhi humay malum hai jiske beyond area hume chahiye. The point is 24,500 x bar ki isi value se uh, aage ka area humko chahiye na. Because the probability that we wish to compute is the probability that in my sample of size 100 x bar will be greater than or equal to rupees 24,500. Aur abhi abhi humne standardization formula bhi dekh liya. So, what are we going to do? We are going to convert this particular value of x bar into z by this formula. And as you now see on the screen, we obtain z is equal to 24,500 minus 24,000. And this expression divided by 412.20. And solving this expression, z comes out to be 1.0. 2, 1. Hence, we need to compute the area between z is equal to 1.21 and plus infinity. Now, according to the area table, we are able to find the area 
between z is equal to 0 and 1.21 and we find that this area comes out to be 0 0.3869. Since the total area under the normal curve from z is equal to 0 to z is equal to plus infinity is 0 0.5, hence subtracting 0 0.3869 from 0 0.5 we obtain the area under the curve from z is equal to 1.21 to plus infinity and this area comes out to be 0 0.1131. Students, ye jo answer humne obtain kiya hai, 0 0.1131, isko hum kis tarah se interpret karenge? Obviously, 0 0.1131 means 11% or iska matlab ye hua that the probability is only 11 percent that in a random sample of size 100 the mean of the sample x bar will exceed rupees 24,500. Iska matlab ye hua ke 89 percent chance hai ke aisa nahi hoga and we can say that the probability is high that the government will consider the demand of the employees of this particular company. All right, the next concept that I will discuss with you is the sampling distribution of p hat, where p hat denotes the proportion of successes in the sample. What we are dealing with here is a binomial population in which every element can be classified as either success or failure. And if we draw a sample out of this population, then of course, in the sample also, every element can be classified as success or failure. So, in this situation, we obtain a sampling distribution, which also has very important properties, just as we had in the case of the sampling distribution of x bar. Let me explain this concept with the help of an example as you now see on the screen. Suppose that a population consists of 6 values 1, 3, 6, 8, 9 and 12. If we regard the occurrence of an even number as success, then we find that the proportion of successes in this population is 3 by 6 and that is 1 by 2 because there are 3 even numbers in this population and they are 6, 8 and 12. Now, if we draw all possible samples of size 3 without replacement from this population, then what will be the salient features of the sampling distribution of p hat? Students, in order to solve this question, we have to proceed step by step exactly the same way as we did when constructing the sampling distribution of x bar. Sabse pehli baat ye hai ke hamara population size hai 6 or hamara sample size hai 3. Now, since we are sampling without replacement, the total number of samples of size 3 that can be drawn from a population of size 6 is 6C3 and that is equal to 6 factorial over 3 factorial into 3 factorial. And students, if we solve this expression, the total number of samples as you now see on the screen comes out to be 20. Now, what are these 20 samples? As you see on the slide, the samples are 136, 138, 139, 1312, 168, 169, 1612, 189, 1812, 1912, 
एंड सो ऑन स्टूडेंट्स मैंने आपसे लास्ट लेक्चर में भी यह बात कही थी दैट इट इज़ वेरी इम्पॉर्टेंट दैट वेन यू वॉन्ट टू कंस्ट्रैक्ट द लिस्ट ऑफ ऑल पॉसिबल सैम्पल्स यू गो इन अ वेरी सिस्टमेटिक मैनर अभी मैंने आपके सामने जो सैम्पल्स प्रजेंट किए आप देखिए कि उसके अंदर एक पैटर्न था हमने पहला नंबर वन कंसिडर किया और उसके साथ सबसे पहले थ्री जो नंबर है उसको मिलाकर उसके साथ थर्ड नंबर जो है वो मुख्तलिफ़ नंबर हमने अटैच किए जब वन थ्री के तमाम पॉसिबल ग्रुप्स मुकम्मल हुए देन वी वेंट टू वन सिक्स और वन सिक्स के साथ जो कुछ पॉसिबल था वो हमने लिखा एंड आफ्टर दैट वी वेंट टू वन एट जब वन का तमाम ग्रुप uh, जो है वो कंप्लीट हो जाएगा उसके बाद वी विल स्टार्ट विद द नंबर थ्री एंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्लाइड वी हैव आफ्टर द फर्स्ट टेन विच हैव वन इन द वेरी बिगनिंग द एलेवेंथ वन थ्री सिक्स एट थ्री सिक्स नाइन थ्री सिक्स ट्वेल्व एंड देन थ्री एट नाइन थ्री एट ट्वेल्व एंड देन थ्री नाइन ट्वेल्व अब थ्री के तमाम ग्रुप्स मुकम्मल होने पर वी स्टार्ट विद द नंबर सिक्स एंड वी हैव सिक्स एट नाइन सिक्स एट ट्वेल्व एंड देन सिक्स नाइन ट्वेल्व फाइनली द लास्ट ट्रिपलेट इज एट नाइन ट्वेल्व अगर आपकी कन्फ्यूजन अभी दूर नहीं हुई तो आप इस तरह से देखिए वी कैन राइट द नंबर वन थ्री सिक्स एट नाइन एंड ट्वेल्व इन अ रो एंड देन यू कैन स्टार्ट अटैचिंग एन एरो फ्राम स्टार्टिंग फ्राम वन विद द अदर वन सो यू कैन हैव वन थ्री सिक्स वन थ्री एट वन थ्री नाइन एंड वन थ्री ट्वेल्व और इसी तरह से You can then have this other ones: one six eight, one six nine, and so on. What we are interested in, students, is the sampling distribution of p hat, where p hat represents the proportion of even numbers in the sample. इसलिए case example में हमने even number को success कहा है. So As you now see on the screen, for the very first sample, one three six, there is one even number, and that is six, and there are two odd numbers, and hence the proportion of even numbers in this particular sample is one by three. Similarly, for the second sample, p hat is equal to one by three, but for the third one, we find that. there is not even a single even number in the sample and hence the proportion of even numbers is 0 by 3 and that is equal to 0 similarly you can compute the proportion of even numbers for every one of those 20 samples and we find that the proportion 1 by 3 as well as the proportion 2 by 3 is repeated many times hence we are interested in constructing the frequency distribution of p hat and doing so we find that the proportion 1 by 3 occurs 9 times and the proportion 2 by 3 also occurs 9 times but the proportions 0 and 1 each of them occurs only once and thus we find that the sum of the column of frequencies is 20 exactly the same as what it should have been because the total number of samples that we drew was 6c3 and that is equal to 20 dekha aapne ki ye bilkul wahi procedure hai jo humne sampling distribution of x bar ke waqt adopt kiya tha and you will recall that after finding all these frequencies we can divide each of them by the total frequency 
and those numbers represent the probabilities of those particular values of p hat. As you now see on the slide, the probability that p hat will be equal to 0 is 1 by 20. The probability that the proportion of even numbers in our sample is 1 by 3. This probability is 9 by 20. The probability of p hat equal to 2 by 3 is also 9 by 20 and that for p hat equal to 1 is 1 by 20. If we draw the graph of this particular sampling distribution of p hat students, we find that it is absolutely symmetrical as you now see on the slide. Next, we are interested in finding the mean and the standard deviation of this particular sampling distribution. The formula for mu p hat that is the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat is sigma p hat into f of p hat very similar to the formula that we had in the case of the sampling distribution of x bar. Also the formula for the variance of the sampling distribution of p hat is sigma p hat square into f of p hat minus sigma p hat into f of p hat whole square. In the case of the sampling distribution of x bar, we had a very similar formula. Sigma square x bar at that time was sigma x bar square into f of x bar minus sigma x bar into f of x bar whole square. Students, I hope that you have been able to see the similarity between the two situations. And now, if we apply these quantities in our example and we compute the relevant quantities, we find, as you now see on the slide, the mean of the sampling distribution of p hat comes out to be 10 over 20, and that is 0 0.5, and the variance of the sampling distribution is 1 over 20, and that is 0 0.5. Zero 0.05. Of course, if I take the square root of 0 0.05, I will obtain the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of p hat, which is also called the standard error of p hat. Achha, aye ab dekhte hain ki ye jo mean humne nikali hai 0.5, kya exactly yehi answer hume milna tha? Agar hum isko locate karte on the graph. It is absolutely symmetric, so the mean has to be in the exact center of this particular distribution. So, in our distribution, mein p hat ki values kya thi? 0, 1 by 3, 2 by 3, and 3 by 3, that is 1. So, the mean values of values, hai, students, 1 by 3 or 2 by 3, unka jo middle hai, what will that be? 1 by 3 plus 2 by 3 divided by 2 and is it or is it not exactly equal to half? Just decide for yourself. And the other point that I would now like to convey to you is that there are some very important relationships between the mean of the distribution of p hat and p, the proportion of successes in the population. Also, relationships between sigma p hat that is the standard error of p hat and p and q the proportion of successes and failures in the population. As you now see on the slide, the relationships are number one mu p hat is equal to p and number two sigma p hat is equal to square root of p q over small n and this whole quantity multiplied by the square root of capital N minus small n over capital N minus 1. Of course, this particular formula is valid if we are sampling without replacement from a finite population, but if we sample with replacement, then our equation is 
sigma p hat is equal to square root of p q over small n because in this situation the finite population correction factor is not required. Substituting the values of mu p hat p q capital N and small n in these equations students as you see on the slide we find that both the equations valid in this situation are verified. Students, aapne dekha ke mean or standard error ki baat bohat similar hai jaise ke sampling distribution of x bar ke case mein humne discuss kiya. Now, what was the extremely important third property in case of the sampling distribution of x bar? I will remind you of the central limit theorem according to which the sampling distribution of x bar approaches normality as the sample size tends to infinity. In the case of the sampling distribution of p hat also students we find that this distribution tends to normality as n tends to infinity and the rule of thumb in this connection is that if both n p and n q are greater than or equal to 5 then we can approximate the binomial sampling distribution of p hat by the normal distribution. Let me now explain this to you with the help of an interesting example. Suppose that 10 percent of the 1 kilogram boxes of sugar in a large warehouse are underweight. Suppose a retailer buys a random sample of 144 of these boxes, what is the probability that at least 5 percent of the sample boxes will be underweight? In order to solve this problem, the first point to be realized is that the sample size 144 is large enough to assume that the sample proportion p hat is approximately normally distributed. According to the relationships that I mentioned earlier, the mean of this sampling distribution is given by mu p hat is equal to p and that is equal to 0 0.10 because we have the information that 10 percent of the boxes are underweight. Similarly, the standard error of p hat is equal to the square root of p q over small n and this is equal to 0 0.10 into 0 0.90 divided by 144 the square root of this entire quantity and this comes out to be 0 0.025. Students, yaha pe aap note kare ke standard error ke liye the formula that I applied is square root of p hat q hat over small n or iske saath finite population correction factor square root of capital N minus small n over capital N minus 1 when is the mal nahi kia is ki kya wajah hai agar aap is problem me jo pehli statement hai us pe gaur kare to aap dekhenge ke it will be all right humne kaha tha ke in a large warehouse um, it has been found that 10 percent of the boxes are underweight jab large warehouse ki baat ho rahi hai to iska matlab hai ke thousands upon thousands of boxes are being prepared. Lehaza, the population size is very large as compared with the sample size which is 144 and we can say that as if we are sampling from an infinite population or aapko yaad hoga ke aise situation mein we do not require the finite population correction. Is problem may what are we trying to determine? Question ye tha, what is the probability that in a sample of size 144, the proportion of boxes that are underweight will be at least 5 percent? Yani kam as kam paanch feesad hoonge underweight. 
तो इसको हम मैथमेटिकली किस तरह से एक्सप्रेस करेंगे एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्लाइड वॉट वी वॉन्ट टू फाइंड इज द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट पी हैट इज ग्रेटर दैन और इक्वल टू जीरो पॉइंट जीरो फाइव स्टूडेंट्स देर इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्सेप्ट दैट इज टू बी डिस्कस्ड हेयर एंड दैट इज द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ कंटिन्यूटी करेक्शन वेन एवर वी अप्रॉक्सीमेट द डिस्क्रीट बाई नॉर्मल डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन by the continuous normal distribution we need to apply what is called continuity correction uski wajah ye hai ke discrete variable x jo hai 0 1 2 so on usko hum um, convert kar rahe hain into a continuous variable by applying this um, correction and for example the number 1 is replaced by the interval 0.5 to 1.5 and the value 2 of the variable x is replaced by the interval 1.5 to 2.5 is tarah se hum proceed kare to hum jo probability compute karna chahte hain usme bhi hum apply karenge ye correction and in this particular scenario that we are discussing now since i am not talking about the random variable x which represents the number of successes in my sample rather i am talking about p hat which is x over small n the proportion of successes in my sample x over small n number of successes divided by the total sample size zahir hai this is the proportion of successes in my sample kyunki is waqt main iski baat kar rahi hu इसलिए वो जो कंटिन्यूटी करेक्शन है वो सिर्फ प्लस या माइनस हाफ के जरिए नहीं अकम्पलिश होगी बल्कि वी विल आइदर सब्ट्रैक्ट और एड वन ओवर टू एन यानी हाफ के साथ नीचे एन भी अटैच होता है बिकॉज इट इज एक्स ओवर एन दैट वी आर ट्राइंग टू अप्लाई दिस करेक्शन टू देर फोर इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जाम्पल as you now see on the screen the probability that p hat is greater than or equal to 0.05 will be found by computing the probability that p hat is greater than or equal to 0.05 minus 1 over 2 times 144 because in this example the sample size is 144. यहाँ पे ये नोट करें कि मैंने माइनस किया है और उसकी वजह यह है कि मुझे एरिया कंप्यूट करना है टू द राइट ऑफ दिस वैल्यू दैट आई एम इंटरेस्टेड इन पॉइंट जीरो फाइव को जब हम एक्सपेंड करेंगे तो थोड़ा सा पीछे को और थोड़ा सा आगे को एक्सपेंड होगा मुझे एरिया आगे का निकालना है और मुझे कवर करनी है वो मिनिमम एज जहाँ से मुझे आगे का एरिया निकालना चाहिए इसलिए आई विल सब्ट्रैक्ट लेकिन अगर इसके बरक्स कोई ऐसा प्रॉब्लम होता जहाँ पे मैं कहती कि आई वॉन्ट टू कम्प्यूट द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट पी हैट इज लेस दैन और इक्वल टू अ सर्टन वैल्यू वहाँ पे मैं स्टूडेंट्स ऐड करती वन ओवर टू एन नाउ गोइंग बैक टू दिस एग्जाम्पल वी हैव the probability that p hat is greater than or equal to 0.05 minus 1 over 2n this is equal to the probability that p hat is greater than or equal to 0.05 minus 1 over 288 now we have to find the area beyond this particular value and students aapko pata to hai ki jab kabhi bhi aapko नॉर्मल कर्व के अंडर एरिया कंप्यूट करना है द फर्स्ट स्टेप इज टू स्टैंडर्डाइज योर वेरिएबल एंड टू कन्वर्ट इट टू जेड एंड व्हाट इज द फॉर्मूला फॉर स्टैंडर्डाइजेशन द वेरिएबल माइनस इट्स मीन डिवाइडेड बाय इट्स स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन सो इन दिस पर्टिकुलर एग्जांपल एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन वी हैव जेड इज इक्वल टू पी हैट माइनस जीरो डिवाइडेड बाई 0.025 and 
substituting the value 0 0.05 minus 1 over 288, we obtain z is equal to minus 2.14. So, this is the z value beyond which we have to find the area under the normal distribution. So, we are required to compute the area under the standard normal curve to the right of z is equal to minus 2.14. As explained in lecture number 30, we will first find the area between z is equal to 0 and z is equal to plus 2.14 and that comes out to be 0 0.4838. We know that because of the absolute symmetry of the normal distribution, the area from 0 to minus 2.14 will also be 0 0.4838 and adding this area to 0 0.5 which is the area between z equal to 0 and plus infinity, the total area comes out to be 0 0.9838. What is the interpretation? of this particular result that we have obtained, students, we can say that the probability is as high as 98 percent that at least 5 percent of the boxes in our sample of size 144 will be underweight. So, agar is mulk mein aisi koi law hai ki jiske tehet not more than 5 percent of the boxes should be underweight. So, phir is warehouse ko to kafi zyada problem ha gai na? The probability is as high as 98 percent that at least 5 percent of the boxes will be underweight. Whereas in reality in that particular warehouse as many as 10 percent of the boxes are underweight. So, they cannot get away with it students. The sampling distributions that we have considered up till now pertained to that situation where we have only one population and we are drawing samples of a particular size from that one population. Let us now consider the situation where we are sampling from two populations. In this regard, I will be discussing with you the sampling distribution of the differences between sample means that is the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar. Also, we will be talking about the sampling distribution of p1 hat minus p2 hat. Let us begin with the first one and I will explain it formally as you now see on the screen. Suppose we have two distinct populations with means mu1 and mu2 and variances sigma1 square and sigma2 square respectively. Let independent random samples of sizes n1 and n2 be selected from the respective populations and let us compute the differences x1 bar minus x2 bar between the means of all possible pairs of samples that we can have. Then a probability distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar can be obtained and such a distribution is called the sampling distribution of the differences between sample means. Aapne dekha ki ye to aur bhi zyada interesting situation paida ho gai. Ab humare paas ek set of means hai x1 bar aur ek aur set of means hoga x2 bar. And then we will find the differences between x1 bar and x2 bar for all possible combinations of x1 bar and x2 bar. So, let me explain this to you with the help of a very simple example. As you now see on the slide, suppose that we draw 
all possible random samples of size 2 with replacement from a finite population consisting of the values 4, 6 and 8. Similarly, let us draw all possible samples of size 2 with replacement from another finite population consisting of the values 1, 2 and 3. Find the possible differences between the sample means of the two populations and construct the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar. All right, hamare paas do bohat hi small size ki populations hai, and we have kept them small so that this example is small, otherwise it will be quite lengthy. The first population is 4, 6, 8. Isme se aapne sample draw karne hai of size 2. But remember, if we are sampling with replacement, the total number of possible samples is n raised to n, 3 raised to 2, and that is 9. Similarly, from the other population, again, population size is 3, sample size is 2, and the total number of samples that we can draw is 3 raised to 2, and that is 9. Now, what are these 18, 9, and 9 samples? Let us see them on the screen. From the first population, the samples are 4, 4, 4, 6, 4, 8, 6, 4, 6, 6, 6, 8, and 8, 4, 8, 6, 8, 8. On the other hand, from the second population, the samples are 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, and 3, 1, 3, 2, 3, 3. Students, आपने देखा कि हमारे पास नंबर रिपीट हो रहे हैं यानी मिसाल के तौर पे 1 1 3 3 तो इसमें तो कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं है ना इस वक्त वी आर नॉट सैंपलिंग विदाउट रिप्लेसमेंट वी आर सैंपलिंग विद रिप्लेसमेंट आपने 1 निकाला वापस डाल दिया दोबारा से 1 आ जाए तो जाहिर है कि आपका सैंपल बनेगा 1 1 नाउ वी हैव 9 सैंपल्स फ्रॉम द फर्स्ट पॉपुलेशन 9 from the second and therefore we have 9 values of x bar from the first population um, and we denote these sample means by x1 bar. Similarly, we denote the 9 sample means of the 9 samples that we drew from the second population by x2 bar. Hence, as you now see on this slide, we have x1 bar as 4, 5, 6, 5, 6, 7, and 6, 7, 8, whereas x2 bar is 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, 1.5, 2.0, and 2.0, 2.5, and 3.0. All right, no sample means plus no sample means. So, kya hum atara differences ki baat kar rahe hai, students? No, we are actually talking about 9 into 9, 81 possible differences between x1 bar and x2 bar. And as you now see on the screen, these 81 possibilities are as follows. If we write the values of x1 bar in the top row and the values of x2 bar in the first column of a bivariate table of the form that you now see, we will have 4, 5, 6, 5, 6, 7 and 6, 7, 8 on the top and we will have 1.0, 1.5 and so on in the first column of the table. Now, I will be subtracting every value of x2 bar from every value of x1 bar and by doing that I will be obtaining 81 differences which I will be writing in the body of this table. In the very first cell I will write 4 minus 1.0 
and that is equal to 3.0. Let us take another cell. Let us take the cell corresponding to the third column and the fourth row of this table. And students, you note that in this situation, I should be subtracting 1.5 from 6. By doing that, I obtain 4.5. And this is exactly the value that we have written in that particular cell. All right. Dekha apne. 9 from one and 9 from the other have given us 81 possible differences between x1 bar and x2 bar. Ab zahir hai ke this is a big pile of uh, numbers and we would be very interested in forming a frequency distribution so that these numbers are arranged in a compact form and students if we do that we obtain the picture that you now see on the screen. We have a column of x1 bar minus x2 bar, which can be denoted by small d. Of course, d means difference. And the values in this column are 1.0, 1.5, 2.0, and so on. Ye wohi values hain jo hamari bivariate table ke andar pai jati hain. Now, after we do the tally method and tally every one of the 81 values in this table, the frequencies come out to be 1, 2, 5, 6, 10, 10, 13, 10, 10, 6, 5, 2, and 1. Students, I hope that you have realized that even if we do not draw the line chart of this particular distribution, it is absolutely symmetric. And we, we are able to say this because if we place a mirror horizontally against the value d equal to 4.0, we see that the frequencies above this mirror are the mirror image of the ones below. Dividing every one of these frequencies by the total frequency 81, we obtain 1 by 81, 2 by 81, 5 by 81, and so on. And students, these numbers represent the probabilities of the various values of D. This particular distribution is called the sampling distribution of D or more appropriately the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar. What are the basic properties of this particular sampling distribution? Students, we find that the mean of the sampling distribution of the differences between sample means is equal to the difference between the population means. As you now see on the slide, this can be expressed mathematically as mu x1 bar minus x2 bar is equal to mu1 minus mu2. And this formula is valid regardless of whether we are sampling with replacement or without replacement. As far as the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar is concerned, in case of sampling with replacement, we have the formula sigma x1 bar minus x2 bar is equal to the square root of sigma 1 square over n1 plus sigma 2 square over n2. And in case of sampling without replacement, this formula will be modified. Students, when I have said pehle bhi kai martaba kaha ke is course mein we are not doing the mathematical derivations of the various formulae, but if you are interested, you are most welcome to look them up and you will find many of them 
in your own textbook. I will be concentrating here on applying them to um, various practical problems. And going back to the example that we were considering just now, what do we have as far as these two formulae are concerned? As you now see on the slide, the mean of the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar, which is the same thing as expected value of x1 bar minus x2 bar. It is given by summation x1 bar minus x2 bar multiplied by f of x1 bar minus x2 bar. Since we are denoting x1 bar minus x2 bar by small d, therefore we can say that mu x1 bar minus x2 bar is equal to sigma d into f of d and multiplying the column of d by the column of f of d and adding these products the answer is 324 over 81 and that is equal to 4. Also sigma square x1 bar minus x2 bar which is the same thing as the variance of d, it is given by the expected value of d square minus the expected value of d whole square and that is equal to summation d square into f of d minus summation d into f of d whole square and constructing the column of d square into f of d and adding this column and also substituting the other required values, we find that the variance of the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar comes out to be 1.67. All right, ye to humne results nikal liye regarding our sampling distribution. Lekin jo humne verify karna hai, uske liye we will need to find the mean and variance of the first population as well as the mean and the variance of the second population. As you see on the screen, applying the ordinary formulae of the mean and the variance, the mean of the first population comes out to be 6 and the variance comes out to be 8 over 3. Similarly, the mean of the second population is 2 and the variance is equal to 2 by 3. What we have to show is that mu x1 bar minus x2 bar is equal to mu1 minus mu2 and if we compute mu1 minus mu2 we find that it is equal to 6 minus 2 and that is equal to 4 and students this is exactly what we obtained when we computed mu x1 bar minus x2 bar hence this first property is verified and as far as the second one is concerned we now compute sigma 1 square over n1 plus sigma 2 square over n2 and substituting the values we obtain 5 over 3 and we note that this is exactly the result that we obtained when we computed the variance of x1 bar minus x2 bar. Students, aapne dekha ke ye do properties verify ho gai is particular example mein. Aur aap ye note karein ke yaha pe ye formula jo hai that the variance of x1 bar minus x2 bar is equal to sigma 1 square over n1 plus sigma 2 square over n2. Ye is liye valid hai because we have done sampling with replacement. Agar sampling without replacement ho, so, then the finite population correction factor apply hona chahiye na? The third point is, what is the shape of our sampling distribution? As you now see on the slide, the first point is that if the populations are normally distributed, then the sampling distribution of x1 bar minus x2 bar will be normal regardless of the sizes of the two samples. It will be normal with mean mu1 minus mu2 and variance sigma1 square over n1 plus sigma2 square over n2. But 
if we have a situation where the populations are non-normal but the sample sizes are large so that as a rule of thumb they are greater than or equal to 30 then by way of the central limit theorem students we can say that the sampling distribution of the differences between sample means will be approximately normal in this particular situation. Dusre lefzo mein hum yehi keh rahe hain ke agar sample sizes large honge to phir pehle ki tarah hum is position mein a jayenge ke hum yeh keh sakein ke humari sampling distribution approximately normal hogi. And as a rule of thumb the number n equal to 30 this is regarded as the minimum size um, at which we can say that it is quite large, large enough for our sampling distribution to be approximately normal. All right, in today's lecture, I discussed with you in detail the sampling distribution of p hat and towards the end of the lecture, we discussed that situation where we are sampling from two distinct populations and we discussed the sampling distribution of the differences between means. I would like to encourage you to practice with this concept as much as you can and students in the next lecture I will take up the sampling distribution of p1 hat minus p2 hat. My best wishes to you and until next time Allah Hafiz.